just 10 years ago, buying 3D software was as normal as buying groceries. But now for some reason, after the success of many companies like Adobe and Autodesk, everyone wants to sell their stuff using the subscription-based model. Meaning that you can't get something for life, but you have to pay on a regular basis, whether it be monthly or yearly. I'm gonna take a wild guess. This is something that you're not happy with. Especially if you are not given an option to choose a perpetual license. Just the other day, I was browsing the market of 3D assets and tools and I noticed that there is a trend starting to build up. Many developers, especially third-party developers, are starting to embrace subscriptions. But for the average Joe, I think this doesn't seem so good. I personally know many 3D artists and have heard and read a lot about how 3D artists want to stick to their old versions, for example of Max, Maya, Cinema 4D and so on, and use it for many years before maybe jumping to the next version after a few years. Unfortunately, this is not the case anymore because under the subscription-based model, you have to pay no matter what you're gonna use, version 2020 or version 2025, it's all the same. The problem is that everyone wants the piece of this pie. So why developers are going in this direction, where exactly is this heading, and what you should expect? Before we continue, I wanted to let you know guys, especially Maya users, if you need Maya plugins and scripts for modeling, retopology, rigging, animation, rendering, you name it, you will find a list of the best stuff in the description of this video. For example, for retopology, you can use a plugin like Zrail that allows you to create polygons on sculpted surfaces in a beautiful way. And if you want to do some hard surface modeling, you can take a look at plugins like Mod It, Plug It, and Stamp It, which will allow you to create complex hard surface models like robots, weapons, or anything else of this kind. For animation, I highly recommend the Pavel Barnav animation scripts because they are just amazing, and they are used by many VFX and game development studios. For simulation and effects, you can use some of the best tools like Fume Effects for fire, smoke, and explosions, Pull Down It for destruction effects, and Ornatrix for hair and fur. So I highly recommend you check out these tools because it will save you a ton of time and headaches, but it will also support this channel. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Here's the thing. While using a subscription of Max, Maya, Cinema 4D or Houdini, or maybe Substance Painter for example, can be beneficial for short-term users, it may not be the most cost-effective solution for long-term users. For short-term users, such as occasional freelancers, like in the case if you need to work on a very complex 3D character that needs millions of polygons, a subscription model provides several advantages. It allows you, for example, to access industry standard 3D software such as ZBrush without a significant upfront cost. This is particularly beneficial for 3D artists who only require the software for a limited time, perhaps to complete a specific project or work on a specific aspect of it like we said. Additionally, subscription models often come with the latest updates and features, which is a good thing for ensuring you have access to cutting-edge tools. But honestly, I'm gonna pedal back a little bit here. This is not always the case because many 3D artists have their software developed by lazy or greedy companies, so they suffer from lack of updates or added new tools that they asked for for many years regardless of the fact that they are paying yearly. So this entirely depends on the company itself in the first place. Anyways, as I said, for long-term users, the subscription model may not be the most cost-effective choice. Over time, the cumulative cost of monthly or yearly subscriptions can surpass the one-time purchase cost for a perpetual license. This can lead to increased expenses, especially if you plan to use the software for several years or you're gonna use it for ongoing, full-time work. Add to that, sometimes VFX and game development studios or even freelancers need to use a multitude of different software to get their work done, and you are probably one of them. Like Maya for modeling and animation, ZBrush for sculpting, Substance Designer and Substance Painter for texture painting, and other third-party engines, and the list goes on, so you can see where this is going. You can imagine how much you will have to pay monthly if you have all these subscription costs. Actually, some of us don't have to imagine, because it is a reality. 
but and it is a big but for transparency some companies offer perpetual licenses like maxon which sell cinema 4d for around 94 dollars per month or 719 dollars if you want to pay each year and a whopping $3,400 for a perpetual license so you can see here why it may be wise to pay for a subscription if you are a short-term user because if you're gonna use Cinema 4D for example for less than a few years it may be a nice thing to pay for a subscription on the other hand for a software like ZBrush you will have to pay around $39 per month or $350 yearly and almost $1,000 if you want to pay for a perpetual license. Companies like SideFX also offer perpetual and rental aka subscription based options based on the type of license that you want whether it be indie, artists or studios. However, if you are an Autodesk user like a Maya or Max user Unfortunately, you don't have the luxury of having to pay for a perpetual license, meaning you can't pay once and forget about it for years. You have to keep paying. Even though subscription-based models can be cool sometimes, it can create an element of uncertainty for long-term users. They are reliant on software providers pricing and policies, like Autodesk, which honestly, I don't know what they are thinking about other than making more money for their investors and shareholders. So as you can see, price increases or changes in licensing terms can be a concern for professionals who have built their workflow around a particular software. So to those of you who are confused about why everything is going in the direction of subscriptions, first of all, it is about the money, obviously. I know what you're thinking right now. You're saying the reason behind the rise of subscription-based software is money, and this is undoubtedly true. However, it's not as simple as that. Now, it's no secret that software development is a business, and companies, as far as I'm aware, would do everything in their power to maximize revenue and profits. I think we can all agree that you don't need a business degree to know this, but how can we break this down in the 3D world and beyond? Well, first of all, subscriptions are great for a consistent stream of revenue. Don't get me wrong, companies always look for new clients, but subscriptions reduce the uncertainty and risk that comes with relying on one-time purchases in the form of perpetual licenses, as they no longer need it to generate money, while also helping them to plan their budget, expenses, or investments more effectively, and to be more attractive to investors, just as someone in the field said, Corporations that are publicly traded are valued based on consistent return and consistent increase in return. So having your company make spikes of money occasionally is less valuable than a steadily growing number of users paying subscriptions. This means that they can approximately predict how much money they will make per month, per year and so on, based on the number of subscribers they have and the price they charge. But let's put this theory to test and see how can they really make money with subscriptions. To prove this, let's take a look at the revenue of one of the most popular subscription-based companies in the market. For example, let's talk about Adobe. In 2006, they achieved a yearly revenue of $2.5 billion, a record at that time, whereas in 2023, they have casually generated $17 billion. And while there are other factors for this, it's clear that subscriptions are a big part of that growth. So as we suggested earlier, this topic goes beyond the financial aspect of it because there are many other factors that make most businesses in the industry adopt this model anyways. One of them is that it is simply the current trend. You've heard me right. One way or another, a lot of people from what I can see no longer view it as a way for greedy tech companies and giants to exploit us. Although it can be the case for some people, for reasons we'll discover later, but instead, I find that a lot of consumers see it as the most efficient way to run a business. After all, if the leading companies in the world right now are using subscriptions and settling for this trend, then why the others can follow suit? What's more interesting to know is that some of these companies simply give up to the competitive pressure too. 3D and digital art in general is a fiercely competitive field, so people can easily forget about a 3D software if something better comes around. Maybe being able to generate more revenue from subscriptions could have helped them to stay relevant. Who knows? I mean in terms of development and keeping the software up to date, especially with the needs of the industry. 
I'm not denying that these companies have their own reasons to follow this model. I get it. Business is business as they say. Business, business. But they also do it because they know they can get away with it. Let's face that. Many of us are unhappy with it. As a 3D artist said, why lock things behind paywalls and subscriptions so much? You can't even buy some expensive products nowadays and use their features unless you also pay for their subscription. A lot of people hate this. You see, through time, as more and more companies started to adopt subscriptions, consumers have grown used to the concept of not owning a software. It didn't happen actually overnight, but it is a concept that got slowly normalized in our collective thoughts. I mean, and became a norm. Because from what I can see, a lot of people are paying, regardless of the fact that they like it or not. And companies like Autodesk are taking advantage of this. Because, for example, they increased the price of subscriptions of Max and Maya by almost $500 in just 5 years. Which is very interesting to say the least. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to stay updated with videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.